Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be taking a first look at those ever-so-explosive ships known as battle cruisers. Uh, you're seeing a few clips from a live stream of mine from just the other day. Unfortunately, I had to edit the audio out from uh, this portion of the clip because I had some microphone issues. But you can see my ships sure like to die. And that's because these are lightly armored battle cruisers going up against the enemy battleships. It's a battle cruiser versus dreadnought scenario in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, the upcoming game by Game Labs, developers of Ultimate General Civil War and Ultimate General Gettysburg. Uh, and in this game, you play as a naval uh, secretary or secretary of the Navy designing ships and fighting ships. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from just the other day, and uh, you're going to be seeing my fifth attempt to sink the enemy battle cruiser uh, in this live stream. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in uh, to this uh, stream from just the other night and see if we can fare a little bit better than those first several explosive results uh, where we, uh, time and time again, were completely blown up as our magazines were struck by enemy shells, just as uh, many British battle cruisers historically were. All right, so we're going to listen to you guys because I've already failed like three or four times. Um, all right, so let's do this. Dark Terran, you're giving some advice, so you want to mix engine upgrades. I can get to 34 knots, really? Does the speed prevent him from, like, effectively hitting me? I'm assuming we want auxiliary engines, right? But those are kind of heavy. Steam to gas. Oh. I don't get better engines. I get induced. Oh. Turbines. Yeah, gas turbines. Woo! Holy hell, that saves so much weight. Why did I not go with mixed engines in the first place? Gas turbines. Wow. 4,000 tons saved. Yay. Okay. Um, oil. It does let me go with oil as well. That's another thousand tons of weight saved. Huzzah! Okay, so this is basically what you want me to do is instead of designing a battle cruiser from like 1906 or 7, you want me to design a 1920s battle cruiser. Okay. Um, ox engine 1, I'm assuming. Armor, I'm assuming we want Krupp level 3. That saves another 3,000 tons! I'm not going to have money for it. That's going to be the issue, right? Okay. Come on, Dark Terran. Give me some advice here. I'm already happy. I can actually build a ship. So I did Krupp 3, drop this to a minimum. Displacement. Really? Okay. Oh, that's going to save us money, I guess. An 18,000 ton battle cruiser? Jeez. Range, very short, I'm assuming. Uh, standard, or do we want to go with many maximum bulkheads? I'm guessing we want to go with maximum bulkheads. Barbette's probably level 3. Anti-torpedo we probably don't need. You want me to leave the uh, the range standard? Or, or bulkheads standard? Getting very Germanic. Yeah, the heavily armored battle cruiser. All right. Uh, Citadel level three. Anti flood level two. Reinforced bulkheads number two. Next barbettes on front and back. Okay. Big superimposed barbettes. Do we get more? I guess that's the other question I have is do we have more. Um, turrets that we can mount main turrets yes we do okay thank god let's go with 13 inch guns gotta love the 13 inchers oh you want me to go with 12 inchers let's let's stick with the 13s for now and see what we can do if we need to go with if we need to drop it down to 12 we can do that but let's try with the 13 inchers one on the front has to be moved up a bit, you think. Okay. Luckless Cat. Thank you also for the follow there. 
Oh, the barbat. Okay, we can move it up. Let's barbat. Probably move it all the way up there. Not side guns. This is not one of those, you know, one of those ships I built previously. We don't need no side guns. Oh, that's a lot of four weight. Probably move that forward a little bit too much. Let's try and move it back one. Then move this back a little bit. All right, that gets the four weight back into about an appropriate level. So we've got the four and the aft guns. We've got eight 13 inchers. This is going to be pretty close to like the Lion class, right? I think that, that resembles the 13 and a half inch gun class. Advanced tower level four, I'm assuming. With the secondary rear tower number four. We're not going to have money for all this, are we? Do we need the secondaries? Do we need, do we need funnels? Hey, look! We're overweight! I haven't even done anything else yet. Engine efficiency is... 100%. We've got way more funnel capacity than we need, actually. We could probably cut that. Um... Should get away with two enhanced. Ah, what did I do that for? I didn't think I was clicking there. Why is it doing this to me? Don't do this to me. All right. Rotate around. Gunpowder to whatever our most advanced lidite level two. Oh, balasite? You're saying balasite? Is that better for penetration? Gives you better give, does give you better muzzle velocity. The Luddite is more of a burning gunpowder, so we'll go with that. Um, I mean, it does make sense that more, more expensive equipment is lighter. That is true, historically anyway. Uh, turrets, electrical, enhanced reloading, range finders, the long range finders. We'll have to play around with the weight a little bit. It's a little bit over, over expense. So we go with heavy shells. Do we want to go with reduced complement? I mean, we're not going to run out of ammo. That's very unlikely. Increased or normal? You think so? I mean, I don't think there's any way we're going to pour through. I'm going to go with reduced. In all honesty, I don't think there's any way we're going to pour through all of our ammo. Unless you're going to, the suggestion is just to stay way far away. Which is probably actually the smarter suggestion. But even so, I just I don't think it's gonna happen. If we're gonna stay far away, which is probably the smart thing, then we do need a modicum of deck armor. The belt armor is probably less important, I imagine. We don't have really much money to spare though. Because I've already Cadillaced out the rest of this. It's interesting that you can't do anything with the propeller shaft. And I'm already out of money. No, I'm not going to go with single turrets. Reinforced bulkheads. Maybe try level one. Can we do anti-flood level one too? Doesn't really, actually, it doesn't really make much of a difference. The cost is next to nothing. And the weight savings aren't our primary concern at the moment. Maybe we do need to go with 12-inch guns. I would much rather go with 13. I want to go with 13. Let me go with 13. Um, turret top. So that puts me way over budget if I if I kind of mess with some of this the way I want to. Your armor values there are only thickness, not effective thickness. So effective thickness does it that's the, the question I have is does it tell you anywhere in the game what your effective thickness is of your armor? I 
I mean, I could reduce it. But if, if all of these technologies increase the quality of your armor, you would think they would also tell you, like, what is the actual effective thickness of your armor? Meanwhile, a 13-inch shell will penetrate deck armor of 2.6 inches out to 17.5 kilometers, but I think we'll probably be inside 12 and a half the whole time. So two inches of deck armor should be sufficient, actually. Same for the turret top. No reason to, I mean, we don't have any secondaries anyway. Okay. I mean, maybe we should go with the 13 inch guns just to save a little bit of money. I kind of feel like maybe we should go with the standard gun reload. It's just, what is the difference here? Gun reload time, it adds weight. Adds cost. What does standard drop us down to? It drops us 3%. We would reload more slowly, but I'm not sure a speed of fire is going to be as important. I think I'll go with advanced hydraulic. I don't think the electrical is, is worth that much. Well, it doesn't seem to make any difference at all in terms of cost. It's really just a weight thing. I'm with 33 knots. So how do you think this ship looks? If I switch it over to 33 knots, 18,000 tons, I don't really know if the extra knot of speed is going to matter a whole lot. We've got the gas turbines, turbines, 5-inch belt armor, 2-inch deck. You went with a 9-inch belt. Wow. But you also had 8-inch guns, right? Or 12-inch guns, right? I can't imagine we would get away with... That. I think the conning tower, you're right, though. It needs to be heavier. We'll try two and a half of deck, just to be safe. Then we'll do two and a half of turret top. I also don't entirely know what the purpose of the speed... Like, I understand the purpose of the speed, but am I going to be bobbing and weaving and jinking, really? I mean, it's really just about keeping distance. Based off what we saw before, even if we're 31 and a half knots, we're still going to be dramatically faster than him. Yeah, I mean, it lets me dictate range, but again, nothing we've seen the enemy design has been faster than 24 knots anyway, so we'll still have a 7 knot advantage. I'd rather trade some of that for armor. Turret should be 9 inches also. As long as we're over 30 knots, I think that's my main concern, to be honest. So I'm I'm breaking script here a little bit. I know you're you're advising and I am listening for the most part, but I'm breaking script just a tiny bit in terms of belt extended should probably be heavier. Honestly, my main concern, let's get it to be 30 knots. That's what I want to be. 30 knots is gonna be fast versus any kind of early dreadnought design like a little bit more belt extended just because I don't want easy kills here. Well, I can always bump it up to flank if I need to though, terrain, terrain which is my point. Like, if he's closing range and it's getting too close, we, we can. Uh, decide to increase the range by increasing the speed a little bit and and take a hit a little bit of a hit in terms of ac in terms of um, in terms of accuracy temporarily anyway eighteen six. Mm. 
electrical turrets, standard reloading. The enhanced doesn't really matter. We'll take the risk. Citadel level two. Let's go to battle with this thing. Let's see what it looks like. Eight inch belt armor, nine inch turrets, nine inch conning tower, two and a half deck, two deck extended, three belt extended. Uh, makes 30 knots of speed. It has eight 13 inch guns on four center line turrets. Bulkheads are standard. Oil firing with gas turbines. This is a pretty advanced battle cruiser. Uh, engine efficiency is at 100%. Let's uh, go away and see what happens. Eight inches of deck arm or eight inches of armor with ninety percent effective gives you fifteen point two. Holy hell! Let's try not to butcher our crew this time. We have no secondary guns though, so that's to be considered. We're at twelve point four. You can see the enemy actually has four, eight, ten guns on its broadside for its main battery guns. That's a lot of iron. It's going to be thrown at us. What's the uh, hit likelihood? 7%? Let's bring it back out here a little bit. Uh, I don't want to... I guess we'll keep normal. I'm assuming the hit, the hit percentage just kind of keeps going up with time. So we sort of plot our uh, target here. We're definitely in range, so we're going to kind of... Whoa! We got a hit already! We hit the tower! Oh, hell yes, that's gonna affect his accuracy. We destroyed the enemy tower. That should pretty substantially impact the enemy. Uh, oh, I'm not even in cruising speed. Let's switch back down to full. The enemy accuracy should drop pretty substantially, I'm guessing, by losing their main tower. They do have a secondary tower as backup. Main gun damage, and we started a fire. We Oh, it's spreading throughout the hull. Yeah! Kaboom! Let's knock this thing out. The only problem is I can't really get a good sense of what's going on, because I can't see, because he's so far away. All right, let's reduce that to three, just to give me a little bit more enjoyment to watching these shells. Destroy the casemate 354. Holy... Balls, yes. Another fire. Look, the whole the Emperor of India, the whole front of the ship is burning or is burned out. The the rear of the ship is starting to burn. Fire control is damaged. The enemy ship is on fire. We haven't even taken a hit. Oh, there's our first hit as soon as I say that. But just a partial pen. We've got a couple of are these ours or are these the enemies? I'm I, I never know if what this top level is. Whoa, the barbette was just destroyed. 193 damage. All right, what are we at? What's the range at? We're inside nine kilometers. Let's angle away a little bit. He has 12 inches. I have 13. Well, no, I have 13 inch guns. So my immunity range. Well, again, I don't know if, if the penetrations represent the effectiveness. Because what you're saying, it means we'd be immune to him outside, inside at 10,000, at 10 kilometers or greater. We are inside 10 kilometers. We're also flooding a little bit. Let's, let's pull back away just to be safe. His structure's pretty shot up. We got a little bit of damage to the conning tower. What are, what's his speed too? His max speed is 22 knots. So we're going to increase range a little bit. Our full speed is better than his flank speed. I think we're increasing slightly. It's hard to tell. We'll go back up to times 5. Yep. All right, so we are opening the range a little bit. We're still getting all of our shells down range. Hit him in the barbette. Started another fire up there in the front of the ship. We really need that fire to spread to the, the one top right corner of his ship. That's the only compartment in the front of his ship that isn't damaged yet. Then we can start working on the rear of his ship. We're continuing to extend the range. 
So we're using those 13-inch guns, the long arm of the uh, of the Navy there, the 13-inch guns, to outrange him. And we're using Jackie Fisher's uh, theory to effect here with the speed of our ship allowing us to dictate the engagement. He got in a little bit closer than we would have liked. He started damaging us. We did start taking some float and structure damage. You know what we did? We just fell back a little bit. We just increased the speed, turned on the gas, pulled back away. We've destroyed his conning tower. We've damaged elements of the front of his ship. Not critically yet. We're increasing that range slightly. It does lower the hit percentage, so it does kind of elongate the course of the battle. But uh, you can see there, there was a main gun hit that just ricocheted. You can kind of see it a little bit. I think it's weird that the the game decides to have you fire in a in a ripple fire. All right, so that's enough of increasing the range. We're outside 10,000 10, uh, meters, which should be inside the, the safe range, the zone of Im immunity to hits on the belt anyway. Uh, we're also immune to deck shells, or we should be. Now, the extended deck would be exposed. We kind of angled in here. You can see a couple of hits there. Some flooding as well on the front of his ship. Thank you, uh, Thomas Spin, for the follow. Lieutenant Duran, also, thank you for the follow. And uh, Silver Nile, if I missed you as well, thank you for the follow. Uh, Vilbel Sticks, also, thank you for the follow. All right, so we are... Cruising almost parallel. Range is closing a little bit. Hit percentage is just a little over 10%. 20% chance of a penetrating strike. Zoom in a little bit here. You can see these shells coming down. We're at 85 structure, 93 float. He is at 69 structure, 78 float. We haven't struck a, struck a blow in a while, though. We still have over 500 rounds of ammo. Oh, we got a couple of hits there. Started another fire. You can see the smoke. The ship is on fire. This fire is in the rear of the ship, which has not yet been touched by us yet, so that's good. When the enemy is on fire, it also does affect his fire control, so that's good. I was actually just reading um, Kai Gun the other day, uh, which is... Uh, ooh, nice. A hit on a casemate there. A good deal of damage done. I was just reading Kai Gun the other day, which is a book that is written about... The Japanese Navy, basically from its modern inception in the 1880s-ish, uh, to it does cover World War II, but it really is just like it's about the Navy up to World War II. It's about the building of Japanese naval uh, technology, the building of Japan's Navy, the building of its uh, naval doctrine, and it kind of explains how the Japanese Navy gets to what to what it becomes in World War II. And I think one thing that was kind of interesting that I had never heard before is that. The Japanese Navy um, had a theory that they developed between World War One and World War Two, and this was based off of some test data. They basically they had a large modern battleship hull that they uh, had to de decommission, or they they couldn't finish constructing it, but it was almost done, um, and they couldn't finish constructing it because of the I believe it was the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922. And, and you can see here, by the way, the enemy's still taking damage, but it's taking a little bit of time. We're doing some damage to him. And they, I forget the name of the hull, but they destroyed this hull. Uh, was one of the Akagi sisters, I believe. Um, but it was, they destroyed this hull through naval gun, gun drills and, and whatnot. Uh, basically, they used it as a, tar as a target practice. But they got a whole bunch of invaluable data off the ship because it was the most modern, war one of the most modern warships in the world. And they, you know, it wasn't often that you could, in controlled environments, destroy one of the most modern battleship hulls with the most modern armored schemes, etc. Uh, it wasn't often you could do that. So they got a bunch of data from doing this. And one of the things they learned, or at least they theorized based off the data, was that you didn't have to hit the enemy ship to do serious crippling damage to it. What I mean by that is they realize that at certain ranges, when a main gun shell hits the water, it will kind of hit the water and then angle out. So kind of like a, like a 
a sideways J. It'll hit and then it'll slide in almost horizontal to the water, uh, a little bit below the surface. And so the, what they theorized was with a armored penetrating shell that has a delayed explosive fuse, you could deliberately fire short. That shell would then curve into the side of the enemy ship and it could actually strike below the armored belt because the armored belt only goes down so far. And so in so doing, you could actually deal more devastating sh hits to the enemy than similarly hitting the ship where you'd have to try and penetrate the armor. And so I think that was an interesting idea. The, the book actually makes a comment, and I've never heard this argument anywhere else. The book actually makes a comment that this is one theory on how the hood could have been sunk, the HMS hood, is that it could have been a short shell that penetrated the belt armor below the belt armor, that it didn't actually go in through the deck armor, but that it actually went in below the belt armor. And I, I don't know how... I've never heard that anywhere else other than Kaigun, but Kaigun is one of the most well-regarded books on the Japanese Navy in the interwar period of time. It's one of the... It's one of those books... It's, it's a, one of those books that people in the know, people in the Navy, analysts, they all recommend it if you're trying to get a, an accurate portrayal of the Japanese the Japanese Navy in this era. And I thought it's kind of interesting because I'd never heard that anywhere else before. It also makes the comment that the Bismarck and the Prince of Wales both did suffer damage from similar shell strikes um, in the same engagement. Um, and I believe was that the South Dakota was hit by it. Um, the deliberate missing of the ship also could, if the, if the shell exploded below the ship, you could kind of have like uh, almost like the magnetic... Uh, impact of like a torpedo going off below the keel as well from, from those shells. And so they had deliberately designed shells with delayed fuses so that the fuse would start the second it hit the water and that way even if you, you know, if you hit the armor the delayed fuse blows up inside the ship. Presumably it doesn't over pen and go through the ship. And if it hits the water it can still explode and do, do damage as well. So I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Meanwhile you can see here the Emperor of India is not doing well. Looks like both of its rear main guns are destroyed. Its forward ones are damaged. It's in rough shape. I've closed the range pretty considerably because I feel relatively safe at this point. I think we've destroyed most of the secondaries. And um, so we've closed the range to a very effective range here. Now we're just kind of trying to pound it into submission uh, to the point where we sink it. Not much float damage, but a whole bunch of structure damage is down to 18. We also... Uh, oh, actually, I didn't put any torpedo tubes on the uh, Nori, Norikura. So unfortunately, I, I can't just torpedo it to death as I would maybe like. But we're in relatively good shape. 93 float, 84 structure. We did take a little bit of damage. The enemy is crippled. So we'll just kind of pound it out here a little bit more and we'll see what happens. Okay. Whoa, I didn't mean to turn that abruptly. I'm not trying to ram the thing. I do hope that they introduce ramming, by the way. One of the things in the game right now between friendly ships is you take massive evasive maneuvers to try and avoid the enemy, um, which makes some sense, but it, or to avoid your own ship. Oh, my God. Were those the... F oh, we got her. Boom. Ammo detonation. I was going to say that was like the first round we'd seen the enemy fire in quite some time. There it goes. Up in smoke. Flaming ruins victory all right well there you have it guys we were able to successfully defeat the enemy battleship in the battle cruiser versus battleship scenario in the upcoming game ultimate admiral dreadnoughts uh, the developers of this game are game labs they're the developers behind uh, ultimate general civil war and ultimate uh, general gettysburg they're also working on ultimate admiral age of sail so they've kind of got a bit of a bit of a nautical bend to them as of late uh, with that being said, guys, uh, this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel. I'll link that in the description. Um, the first few clips you saw of my battle cruisers blowing up were all from the live stream just last night. It was over two hours long. I had some audio issues early, so I couldn't show all of it here. Uh, but I hope you guys did enjoy the video and what you got to see. Uh, I appreciated the help from all the followers and the viewers. And uh, we'll, until next time, guys, we'll, we'll leave it there. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.